receiving his PhD in electrical engineering from Arizona State. He is a professor of electrical and computer <laughs> engineering and the associate dean of the graduate school. One of his most accomplishments is that he was recognized by President Barack Obama with the Presidential Award for Excellence in Science, Mathematics, and Engineering. Please welcome Dr. Flores. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's uh, always a pleasure uh, to come back to San Antonio. Uh, it's much more humid over here than El Paso. Those of you who know El Paso, you know, really appreciate that. Uh, <clears throat> I'm here to talk about a number of issues that are very relevant, of course, to the uh, main topic of, uh, of, of this summit. Uh, the title that you see on the brochure is a little bit misleading because it talks about just research. So I could spend ta hours talking about synthetic aperture radar, which is my field of research, but I won't be doing that today. <laughs> Instead, I will talk about my other passion, which has to do with best practices in STEM education. And uh, one of the things that, of course, we need to make sure that we understand why we're here, and we have already uh, started conversation along these lines, is now why are we interested in STEM? Why Latinos and Latinas? And of course, you know, the bottom line is that we are dealing with an issue that is very relevant to the economy. And we want to make sure that our Latino community will be able to participate in that economy. It's going to be an economy of innovation. We're already moving in that direction. It's going to stay like that for a long period of time. So we need to make sure that uh, our particular community is going to be engaged in this economy in this century. Okay? So we want with them to participate in the in economy. Now, disclaimers. Uh, I'm not a lawyer, but I try to do my best here. This may sound like a lesson about soccer or football. It is not. Okay? Some of the opinions that, are, uh, that I'm going to give here are rooted in my own experience growing on the border, on the uh, poor side of town, el lado más pobre. Uh, the goal here is not to change your minds because I already see that a lot of you are committed to the, uh, what we are doing. But really, I want you to reflect about some of the more important issues that we have to deal with. Uh, and uh, if I sound frustrated, okay, perdón, I'm not really trying to ruin your day. I'm just going to share your pain. And it is, it is hard for those of us who are in the trenches to try to solve all the problems in the world and we can think, do things only one day at a time and try to build it that way. Okay. Um, I am an educator. I can't help but being an educator. I come from a family of teachers and of course that is the way I am molded. So I do have heroes. Uh, Benito Juarez, Lincoln, Gandhi, and my grandma. Okay. My question is, who is your hero? Write it down. We'll come back to that later. Okay. okay, we're in this beautiful setting of Cantera. Do you know what Cantera is? You're familiar with that? Even if you're not a, a geologist, you probably un un understand that Cantera is really is an igneous rock and that is used for construction. The Spaniards loved using that. If you go into uh, southern uh, Mexico, you'll see a ton, lots and lots of buildings bu built with cantera, and of course the facade of the, of the hotel is built that way. But it also means something else. It also is a source of raw material. That's the other wider definition of cantera. And in soccer, we actually have canteras. You know, uh, canteras de fútbol, okay? This is where we find the raw material that we use, we're going to use in, in uh, the, the main uh, division of soccer, whatever the country that may be. Here in the United States, of course, we do have that as well. So our question is, how do we transform Cantera into a useful quality product in STEM? Okay? And that's what we're getting uh, to. There are a number of strategies that we have proven all time and time again that are rather effective that can make a huge difference in the student's life that will allow that student to earn that degree. We can start talking about active learning. You know, learn by doing right, and by undoing. That's what engineers do. 
do something and then you undo it and then you f figure out how you put it back together. Okay. Ah, first year seminars, of course, are very effective. Okay, and this is something that we have been practicing. And by, by, what I mean by we is here in the United States, we've been doing this since the 1970s. And we know that that works. Yet, we're very resistant to the idea of implementing them widely. Uh, learning communities for entering students also does the whole idea, does wonders for student retention in the first year. Intrusive advising, getting professionals that actually know, get to know the students better and that provide that just-in-time advice to make sure that the students are making the right decisions of staying in school versus leaving college is also crucial. Uh, Peer-led team learning workshops where you actually have students running the workshop which is complementary to class. It's not supplemental instruction, but rather an approach where you have a junior or senior student in the discipline taking over two hours of the student's life during a period, uh, during a particular week, in making sure that the student gets guided in the process of learning. Uh, that's more of a active learning that is doing and undoing. Uh, enriching experiences is another topic that is crucial for us. You know, try to think about our curricula. Where are we enriching the experience that our students get? Aside from what happens in the classroom, which is, of course, an enriching experience in itself, but what else are we doing for our students? Our students are, need to be engaged, need to think that they belong to something. And these enriching experiences actually help them out significantly. And one of them, of course, is in the STEM disciplines is undergraduate research. It's not just that we want our students to go to graduate school. Yes, you know, we tend to be very selfish, right? We want to make sure we want to replicate ourselves. We say, you want to come to graduate school because you want to look like me. But it's also about, about something else. It's about developing a certain set of skills that will be very useful in the career of that, uh, that, in the future career of that student. So we have a plethora of evidence out there that says that these things actually work. If you implement a university seminar, you can be sure that you can increase the one year retention, the first year retention by about 10% or so. If you implement learning communities, you can improve retention rates uh, anywhere between 10 and 20% which can be huge if you think about the uh, impact that that will have after staying in school for four years. I mean, there's a significant trickling effect there. Uh, Peer-led team learning can increase student success in any particular course if you decide to implement that. You can be sure that if your passing rate was 50% in pre-calculus, you can increase that to 75%. But you've got to try it. Uh, undergraduate research, of course, we know that there's a high correlation between graduation rates and that particular activity. I.e., if you take a student and offer that student uh, an undergraduate research experience for one semester or two semesters or maybe just a summer session, you will be sure to have worked very hard and uh, make contribution to the graduation rate of a uh, set of cohorts of students that, that are engaged in that activity. So we know that. Now here in Texas, and I'm going to talk to my local constituency, those of us who work in Texas, you know, we have a huge identity issue in higher education. You know, we know that if we graduate nine of, out of every ten students that come knocking on the doors, what do we call the, them? We call them the Rice Owls, right? Those are the students that go to the University of Rice. If they graduate seven out of every ten students, what do we, 